Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will explain extended submandibular approaches to the inferior border of the mandible. Should more exposure of the mandible become necessary, the surgeon has several choices for increased epsilateral exposure. The mandibular incision can be extended posteriorly towards the mastoid region and interiorly in an arcing manner towards the submental region. Once the incision leaves the direction of the resting skin tension lines, however, the resultant scar will be more obvious. Note that the incision leaves the resting skin tension lines interiorly as it moves towards the submental area. Uh, to eliminate some of the undesirable scarring that may accompany the change in direction of the incision uh, towards the submental area, one can step uh, the interior portion of the incision. The longer arms of the step should be kept uh, close or parallel to the resting skin tension lines. Surgical splitting of the lower lip is another maneuver occasionally used in combination with incisions in the submandibular area to increase exposure to one side of the mandible. It is possible to divide the lower lip in several ways. Uh, each method uses the principle of breaking up the incision line to minimize scar contracture during healing. The incision can be connected to submandibular incisions on either side. Uh, here you can see a technique of a splitting the slip following the mentolabial crease. This technique is used is in conjunction with the contralateral submandibular incision uh, to increase exposure of that side of the mandible. For complete bilateral exposure of the mandible, one can use an apron flap with or without lip splitting. Bilateral submandibular incisions are extended into the neck and then are connected. The incisions may go somewhat towards the submental region or be kept low in the neck depending on the surgical requirements. In this figure, bilateral submandibular incisions connected in the midline for complete bilateral exposure of the mandible. To recall the submandibular approach, the skin incision is marked and positioned within an upper cervical crease greater than two centimeters below the inferior border of the mandible. This is the flail mandible with loss of horizontal projection of the lower third of the face, marking of planned transcervical apron incision coinciding with a cervical crease approximately one centimeter cephalic. Thank you. Have a nice time.